Hello everyone, welcome. It's Ryan here from the London Craftsman channel. How are you keeping? Right, today's video is all about the spray room side of my workshop and it's specifically about how I finish my fitted furniture. So I'm not sure if you've watched part one and part two. This is a three part series. I'm on the last one now, part three. So part one was all about what tools and machines we need in order to fit our fitted furniture. And part two was all about what tools and machines we need to make our fitted furniture. Yes, I know it's back to front, but I started with the site kit first because I had the site kit out. But anyway, today is all about all the machines that you see around me. It's about my racks, it's around the booth, it's around the fans. I'm going to show you everything that you need or what I use, shall I say. Um, in order to spray your fitted furniture with an airless sprayer pretty easy, pretty quickly, enough to get you going. So if you watch part one, two and three, you should have enough information there to buy all your tools and machines to make your furniture, finish your fitted furniture and to install your fitted furniture. So if that floats your boat, you want to find out more, let's stay tuned, watch to the end and I hope you enjoy. Okay, before I start, say hello Bertie. Yeah. It's my son, it's the London Craft son. He's gonna be the next person in here in about 10 years time, running the shop, aren't you? So um, yeah, so he's holding the sign. We're at 32.8 thousand subscribers. So anyone who likes our content and wants to subscribe and even join our membership, hit the subscribe button or hit the membership button, like the video, comment, all those things. It goes a long, long way, so thank you very much. And what we're going to do today, Bursi, we're going to give a little tour, aren't we? Yeah. We're going to give a little tour on all the tools and machines that we use and just give you an overview of the entire spray booth and, well, the whole spray room area to be able to help you out, to give you some information and some advice on what you may possibly need, um, tool related and accessory related and rack related, etc., etc to get you going spraying your furniture with airless sprayers. We only use airless sprayers. We don't use anything else other than airless and they are fast, they're efficient and they spray normal household paints like eggshells and silks, etc., etc. And they are just very, very fast. And that's the reason why I like these. You don't have to thin down the paints. You just put your sprayer directly into the paint, no thinning and away you go within five minutes. So that's the reason um, my whole spray booth is based around the airless sprayers. Not only that, you can use them to spray your house, all different applications, spraying your fence panels, you can even spray the ex external part of your house. Anything paint related, they could probably do. So this is the reason why we've got these, but we'll go over those in just a minute. So this is our spray room here. If I just stand back a little bit, and as you can see, we've got four sliding doors. One is right in the corner and we've got three there. We've slid them all back for this video today. They keep the dust from the workshop side so it doesn't come into the spray room side. And it also soundproofs. It's about eight meters long by about five meters and we've got floor to ceiling of 2.5 so we can stand up full sheets. So what we'll do is just go down to start with the sprayers because that's what the most important part of the um, video is, I believe. What do you think, Bertie? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So let's start with these sprayers, okay? I'm always a Graco fan, always been a Graco fan. And like I said a moment ago, that I always use airless and I just find airless um, very fast and they're easy to prime, easy to clean, and they give you a, a very good finish. Um, they don't give you an absolutely flawless finish as in like your car or HVLP spray, but very, very good. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely good enough um, as a paid finish for a customer. Um, I've been using these, I don't know, eight to ten years now. I always forget and I've not had one complaint. All the customers love the finish that I give them and that is just using eggshells and silks. So I've had loads of these sprayers from 390s to the Pro Step to the handheld one. Um, and here we've got two of the bigger ones. Um, we've got the 595 and the 695. So this is probably the best one that you could probably buy from Graco. Other than one that they have got coming out very soon, 
I cannot show you anything. Um, I've got one that I'm testing right now, but hold tight. They've got a fantastic version coming out very, very soon. And I'm going to be excited to show you that. All right, so stay tuned for that one. But these are just animals. They'll just spray through anything. You can attach two guns to these. So these are basically there to paint warehouses, houses, all massive, massive areas, you know, pumping out tons of paint really, really fast. You know, they're probably overkill. They, they are overkill for what we do. But, you know, you buy an expensive machine, you get one that lasts. It's going to serve you for years and years and years. 20 years, you'll probably get out of these as long as you service them. I generally use these two. And um, one is basically for colors and one is for whites. Um, I am testing this one, so it's a little bit mixed up at the moment. Um, so I believe that is my colors and that is my whites. They do the job really, really well. So these are all 110. You won't get a 240 volt um, spray, I don't believe. They run off one of those yellow 110 transformer boxes, which is fine. They all do it. All the airless sprayers do it. So when I spray, I can spray from anything as low as 1200 PSI because these work on really, really high PSIs, anything up to 3300, I believe. And But we don't want to spray that high. We want to get the spray um, pressure down as low as possible to give us the best quality um, fan um, from the gun or the tip. So we go from anything like 1200 up to 2200. It all depends on the paint that you've got and how cold it is, the viscosity of the paint and a few other factors. But yeah, generally it's between those pressures that give us a nice finish. So they are the two sprayers that we always use. So if we move over here, what I should really do is show you the paints that we use. Um, I'm um, a believer of the silk paints. You would probably laugh at me and anyone who's watched me only today um, and is hearing this for the first time, you'll probably just gasp. But I use silk contract paint for my top finish quite a lot of the time, for my white finishes. And trust me, it gives you a very, very nice finish um, and very durable. And again, you're going to gasp again because I do three coats of this directly on top of MDF rather than an undercoat. We used to do the undercoat back in the day. We use this acrylic undercoat, primer undercoat for our first coat. Sand it back and then do two of the silk or an eggshell. But I did do I did an experiment back in the day where I did three of these and it is absolutely spot on. It, it's such a tough paint. So when you do spray it on, you sand it back. It's actually ingrained into the MDF or the ply or anything that you're spraying. If you do want to try it and test it, um, you'll probably be, you'll probably turn into a believer and you'll probably go, yeah, this is actually a really good technique. And it just means you're cutting down from swapping and spray it. You're swapping the paints over on your sprayers from the primer to the top coat all the time. And I do the same in the eggshells. OK, so if I'm doing a colored paint or colored eggshell, um, as you can see here, we've got the colored um, tintable version of the Johnstones and we've got a white. If we are doing any of those. We would do the same technique. It'd be three of the color or three of the white eggshell or three of the contract silk. And it works really, really well. The reason we've got these two out is because we've got two undercoats that we use for priming edges in the workshop. Just wanted to show you that. So anything when we're stacking up all our materials to, um, to sort those ed MDF edges out. Um, if it's going a dark color, we've got a dark water based undercoat. If there's a light color. We've got a white undercoat. OK. All water-based. I don't use anything else other than water-based. So they are the paints that I use. So if we're going to go to the accessories now, as you can see, we've got a selection of tips. So the green ones are the ones that we want to use. They are fine finish, and they are the ones that we're going to be using for spraying our furniture. They atomize the paint a lot more finer, and it just gives you a very nice pattern, a spray pattern. gives you a nice mist. Blue um, are generally for walls and ceilings and those kind of applications, but green are the fine finish, low pressure, as you can see, FF, LP. They're the ones you want to go. My go-to tips are a 310 or a 410. So the four, um, well, so the three in a 310, if you double the three, that's six, that gives you a six inch fan width. And the 10 is the size of the hole in thousandths of a inch. Um, there are graphs out there online to be able to tell what tip you need for what paint you're going to use or varnish, etc. So depending on how thin you're spraying, 
um, if you're doing a spraying a varnish or an, um, or you're spraying something a lot thicker like an emulsion then you'll need different tip sizes or different orifice, orifice sizes the second part of the tip number you'll need to change so I've got a selection and you know loads of these are probably old but we have got numbers from something like 514 um, what else we've got so we've got 410 we've got a 208 we've got a selection and we just try them all but again the 310 and the 410 are perfect for doing small to medium sized panels and backings pretty quickly so they are the tips and um, other bits that we use are filters so you're going to want a selection of filters so these go in the manifold so they will go in that part of your sprayer so these machines have three three filters um, you've also got a gun filter and um, so that will go in the actual gun handle right there and then you've got another one which I can't really show you it goes on the end of the um, the tube at the bottom that sucks the paint so it just it's a strainer so it doesn't suck all the big bits out of the paint three filters that you're going to need as spares just in case and they do come in different grits or grade shall I say if you look here one is a lot more coarse than the other you've got silver um, black and blue I can't actually remember which ones I use for what but again there's graphs out there um, and I can't remember what I've got in there for my eggshells is it the blue it might be the blue but anyway so they're the filters that you're going to need and we've got a spare guard for the end of the gun just in case one goes wrong we need a spare always good to have spares isn't it Bertie Always good. Yeah. What else can you tell your view the viewers? Mm -hmm. You don't know. <laughs> all right, come, come up with something. All right, tell me later. All right, um, other things that we have. Okay, we've got lubricants, throat seal oil. So where your piston goes up and down here, squirt a little bit or bit of oil on the little piston there just before you use it. One or two drops every use. Yeah, it's not oil. It's Oh, that one's WD-40. I use WD-40 to get me out of trouble sometimes. When I didn't have this one, this is the correct one. This is this is the oil. This is called throat seal oil. But, you know, an oil is an oil, but the correct one to use is the one that they supply you with. We've got other bits. Let's go through all the little bits and pieces. A toothbrush to clean up all my tips and the guns and filters. Oh, let me try and brush your teeth. It doesn't want, yeah, so you're not going to do it. You're going to test it. Um, we've got a good mask with the correct filters for vapors and spray. Um, we've got rubber gloves, vinyl, size large, a, a little broom, a nice brush, just when the piece goes on our rack over there. Um, if it's been sitting on the rack or it's on its second coat, it's been there for a couple of days, even though Sean does, does dust it off in the workshop, we just go over with the with the brush with the fans on so it's sucking that dust out before we go ahead and spray just to make sure there's no debris that's fallen on them bits of sandpaper so if it comes in and i just notice something that's just a defect or a little bit of filler that's been missed for example a little rub with a 240 um hand roll just when the guns come out of the bucket about to use one i do shake them off like so really hard and then i roll up some tissue paper and just dab the the end of the gun just make sure i don't get any drips on my work as i'm spraying and one thing we've got is this strange little tub so they go over your paint tub like so and that just allows you to cover your paint up for the um for a day or so or however long you need it and your hose will come through if i give you an example without showing you too much like so okay like so yeah and that saves the paint, it stops the air getting to your paint and um, keeps it nice and fresh and stops bits and pieces falling in it. Okay, so I just wanted to say that just below your sprayers, either use Corex or some little boards that, you know, because you are going to get spillages when you're taking um, the lids off these filters. You will get a drip of paint dropping down, etc., etc., and it's going to drip on the floor. Um, so I've got Corex that covers the whole of my floor. So it's been down for five years and I thought every year I'd have to change but I haven't and it's white to reflect the light but it cleans so if I spill paint on it I can just wipe it up but these two MDF boards do a great job they're just absolutely covered and if I didn't have those there then um, the floor would be just a mess one more thing is always cover your sprayers up these are expensive machines I've got this really thick heavy-duty blanket that goes over all three 
even though airless spray doesn't give off a massive amount of um, overspray compared to HVLP, it's probably like 10%, you still get some floating around in the air. You don't want spray landing on your machines and it's just not the way to look after your tools. Look after your tools and they'll look after you. So I think next we'll move on to the fans, okay? So with the fans, they do a great job for us. They're very cheap. They are from Amazon. I'm going to leave links in the descriptions for, in the video description for you to pick up anything that you see here. Just to let you know, if you do buy anything through my links, I do earn a small amount. So if you do, that's um, really uh, greatly appreciated. It helps support the channel um, and all the time and effort we put into putting all this information out. So these two fans are 400 by 400. They do a really, really good job. And as you can see, can you see any spray above three foot high? You know, this is five year old Corex, by the way. You can still see the OSB through the walls. There's no overspray, apart from when I've gone a little bit mad here and there. But I'm spraying, you know, I've probably sprayed 500 litres, more, 1,000 litres in the past five years over this Corex, and these are clean as a whistle at the top. So what I'm trying to say is the fans do a really, really good job um, for me. Um, when they are on, this door is open, so it sucks the fresh air in. Those doors are closed, so it doesn't suck any air through. Um, but we do cover them with filters. Can you see the surround around them? So that's 50 mil deep, a little OSB surround, and we put Corex around it too. So when we are cleaning off, we just peel the Corex off and you know pe peel the paint off the Corex, um, and or just replace the Corex. So it's just looking after our frame, basically. Can you see brand new OSB over there? So we built these frames 50 mil thick or 50 mil deep to accept a set of filters that I, I've, I've made myself, okay? So I'll put a little link up on a video that I made to be able to make these um, filters with something ridiculous like ATP per filter um, using a roll. And I'm going to leave a link up there right now, the photo of my video, and obviously links in the description. But Bertie is showing one now. It's just over 400 by 400. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, as you can see, it's 50 mil thick at the top. Okay. And we've got loads of these and we've stacked them. Well done, Bertie. Once we've made a load, because they're so thick, when you've made 100 or so from a whole roll, they take up the whole workshop. If you look at that video, you'll see how many we had. Just get two OSB boards or whatever you want and squish them all together and they'll squish as close as maybe six inches. Wrap them up with a bit of handy wrap, and that's one good way to store them. And you could just slide them out one at a time. But anyway, that's the roll that we use, and um, they're really, really cheap. They do clog up after maybe an hour. Yeah, if you just demonstrate one in there, they'll go in there like so. And they do clog up. You'll see that the top layer clogs up first. So if you do want to just keep using that filter, just rip off the first 10 mil, pull it back and you'll get a bit more life out of the filter. You may be able to do that twice. Okay, so remember these fans go straight through to the other side. I've got a fence on the other side, so it does not matter. Um, yeah, so it's basically a stud wall construction, this, and it goes straight outside. So that is the fans. So if we look above, we've got a piece of timber. If we need to, need to hang anything from it. Cause and wet paint, yeah. Tools that, um, paint shed sent me up that with a delivery, so it went up. Um, above it, we've got a nice skylight, natural light directly above the work is fantastic. Um, I love that. It's nice and bright in here. Look, really, really bright. Um, yeah, other things that we've got, oh, we've got this table that I made myself when we built the workshop, splayed legs. Um, it's about, I don't know, 800 long by 600 deep. And I'm guessing about 800 tall. Um, on the top of the... Um, table. Um, it's all covered in um, handy wrap. So the plastic stretchy wrapping, we've wrapped it all up. So every couple of years, we peel that back and it's a brand new bench underneath. I'll give you an example. Can you see? Brand new underneath. So if you want to see a video of me cleaning up the spray booth, how much paint that we got off the Corex, how it just peeled off like an orange peel and brought us, brought it back to brand new Corex within half an hour and um, watch the video above. It was really, really, really quiet. Awesome, really. Um, above it, we've got a turntable, so we can just put a piece of wood on the top, and we can spray it. 
and we can spray it and we can spin it etc etc but he wants me to spray so maybe we'll do a little bit of spraying in a minute okay demo but we'll do it after the video um we'll do it after we've showed them everything okay so yeah that's very very cheap that's from amazon again it's just dirt cheap don't buy a stupidly expensive one we've got a bit of a coat hanger here i've just screwed it on and it just holds my gun really nicely every time i'm spraying and i'm finished it just hangs up on there while we're talking about the gun the gun um, on one of them is a three meter hose i believe to cut down how much paint that you need to buy because these airless sprayers they do take about a liter of paint before it gets to the gun and getting all the air out um, one's longer than the other but i have got one short hose and one longer hose um, it just minimizes how much paint you're going to need to do your project other bits are just have spare bits or corex around as well um, like so as you can see it's got tons of paint it's just plastic floor protection so for example if you are spraying a thin piece of wood like so you could just place it on your corex and it just and you can spray it it just sprays the corex and then you could just remove it you could do a couple like that just make sure you just don't stick it back down on the wet paint but when you finish it just protects your turntable otherwise yeah it just becomes a mess so corex is good when it dries you just peel that corex off and it just looks brand new again and you just keep reusing it and reusing it we've got buckets here as you can see we put our guns in a little pot but the pot is in a bucket so when we're um, getting a gun out we want to just shake that water off or we're just plonking it in if we get any spillages it'll go in the bucket we've got a spit bucket here as well so if you get a blockage you need to spin the, um, the tip around 180 fire it we fire it in here or if we're cleaning the gun out we need to get some of the waste out we just use that bucket and we've got a few boards so if we're spraying lots of trims for example we would put that board up here on the rack and then we could just rest um, five six seven long trims on one board and spray them as one rather than wasting paint and spraying one at one at a time and just get lots of overspray and wasting all your paint so we use those and then we just keep using them because when they're dry you could just reuse them and reuse them so one other thing i want to talk about before i leave this area is the grid so this is like a driveway grid where you put it on grass and the grass can grow through it's quite really thick and um, substantial tiles each one i think is 500 by 500 so one two three four that's a square meter two square meters three square meters it's good because when you are spraying you will get a tiny bit of overspray near where your feet are it will just hit that grid 50 60 70 percent of it will go through the grid to the bottom and it just minimizes how much you walk through as you can see here can you see any footprints anywhere no i don't have that issue where i'm walking paint from where i'm spraying to anywhere around here so the grid does a fantastic job for that if i didn't have it it would just be a complete mess imagine i'm spraying here I'm spraying without anything it's going to go on a corex be a puddle of wet paint and it's just going to go everywhere so well worth investing in this we haven't got much more to talk about in here other than the racks okay so the racks play an important role in making a great spray room space and we can go through two three jobs in one hit in what we have here we've got one entire wall of twin slot shelving we have wasted a few slats at the top storing extra long pieces and we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen we've got 14 there which you can see so we can hack we can um store 14 doors then 14 more smaller pieces here so this is always generally for our longer pieces and trims and doors and side panels so oh, you can't do the top ones as well okay well we got well if i didn't have those we'd have more wouldn't we and over here we got um wheelable ones too so we got a wheelable rack that is quite close together and they're about 300 apart and these ones are 600 apart so when we've got a massive job or two massive jobs we can definitely fit them all in the spaces that we have pretty easy then we can dot them on top of the racks we can dot them on top of the feet we can stand backings up when we spray big backings we generally just lay them on edge on the long edge up against the beam or something like that and um, the great thing about using mortar base is that if you've got your heater on then it can dry within an hour so you can then pick it up and just if you need the space for example a wardrobe side where it's only sprayed one face give it an hour you could probably just free up a bit of space on your rack and stand it somewhere up against this beam up the top 
we can stand quite a few components up there or four or five pieces around this beam or up against those walls. When we spray drawers, they just go down on the floor very gently and just rest on the floor to dry. Within an hour, they're dry. We can speed up the process also. I want to go over that. So over here, we've got a space heater and this space heater is um, diesel or kerosene. We use kerosene because we got um, we store some kerosene and um, yeah, it just makes it nice and toasty in here. Um, it just makes it a really, really warm environment and dries the paint so fast. Um, I'd probably say as quick as if it's in the summer and you had this on, 20 minutes, you've got a dry door. Cold weather like this, where it's only 8, 10 degrees outside, then give it an hour, give it an hour and a half with this on, even drawers where it's inside a space where the paint doesn't dry as fast, or inside shaker panels, you know, in these little corner pieces, paint just doesn't dry as fast. Space Heater does a fantastic job. So, yeah, I think we've gone over everything. We've gone over the sprayers, we've gone over all the bits and pieces that we need, all the paints why I spray the three coats of one paint without doing an undercoat, and racks, spray booth, lights, the amount of space you need. Don't think I've missed anything, but I will leave links to everything that I have or everything possible in the video description. If I was to give you one word of advice, go and spend as much as you can on a sprayer. Don't skimp, don't buy a no-name brand. Get something like a GX21, I believe, or, or a 390. 390 is a great machine. Buy them secondhand or Spray Direct are absolutely fantastic with their prices and their customer service. So there you go. I think that is the video done. I hope you have enjoyed everything, all the information I've given you. So there you go. I hope you liked the video. If you have, like and subscribe, especially subscribe. It goes a long, long way. Bertie, you holding that camera nice and still? Um, it goes a long, long way. And it just means a massive deal to us as we're a small channel and we put lots of time into making these. And it's basically all the information that I've learned over all my time spraying. So remember, we've got part one, part two, part three, everything that you need now to make your furniture, finish your furniture and install your furniture. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to leave it like that. Take it easy. See you next Sunday. Bye for now.